So a quick review. Air quality is mostly measured by the amounts of ozone, that's O3, and PM2.5, that's particulate matter of the smallest diameter. So that's because these two of the air pollutants are the most toxic for humans, even at low concentrations. And um, I recommended a couple sites, airnow.gov or purpleair.com, but also on smartphones, there's a, uh, I think, a region that re reports the weather and the UV index, which we'll get into next chapter, and also the air quality for wherever you are. Um, so it's something to look at in order to plan your day, basically your outdoor activities. So here we have the number of unhealthy days per year on this table. And based on ozone, um, we can see Los Angeles is the highest number of unhealthy days per year. Sorry, everyone here in L.A. Um, air quality depends on where you live. Okay, And why does Los Angeles have the highest amount of ozone? So ozone is a secondary air pollutant, and it is produced from one of the primary air pollutants. So in L.A., what we have a lot of is NO2 from cars. This is from car exhaust. And so even though there's cars that are regulated, even though there's, there's electric cars, we just have a lot of people and a lot of cars. And so this NO2 plus sunlight generates this secondary air pollutant. So you have to have the primary air pollutant NO2 and that generates this ozone. Um, and without this NO2, if we got rid of all the cars then we and only had the sun, we actually wouldn't have any of the ozone. So uh, by particulate matter, the highest value is Sacramento with 13. And so why does Sacramento have 13? Uh, this is because this is in the San Joaquin Valley. And in the San Joaquin Valley, there's a couple things going on. There's a lot of agriculture. Okay, and so there's a lot of dust from agriculture that gets kicked up. And um, this dust ends up as in trapped in an inversion layer, a giant inversion layer, that is the entire San Joaquin Valley. Because remember, you have the inversion layer that's due to a valley with mountains around it. And that's this most of the this L.A., uh, not just LA, but this whole California basin. So um, this is something, though, that we experience uh, with wildfires is that we also have levels of PM 2.5, but most of the year it's going to be ozone. So the good news is, is that all air pollutants have decreased since the 1970s thanks to the Clean Air Act. And so the Clean Air Act of 1970 established standards that the government has, the government regulates the Environmental Protection Agency, um, that they regulate. It also depends on the head of the EPA. Sometimes the head of the EPA is a coal, a coal mining person, as we have with this current administration. But most EPA heads have been pro environment. So um, this is since. On this graph on the x-axis, we have 2000 to 2014, so a 14-year period. And on the y-axis, you have the percentage above or below the air quality standards. So the air quality standards are shown on this across by this dotted line. This would be the above or below. And you can see that there's an overall downward trend, that these numbers have all gone down since 1970 and since 2000 on this graph. Okay, And they've all dropped below. this standard since 2009. And so all of these include the carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, particulate matter, and sulfur dioxide. This also includes lead. So we can see that all these have dropped, all these numbers are below this um, level, which is good. That means that air, we don't have those air pollutants and that this worked, this regulation by the EPA. So we have uh, we do have days though that we uh, we don't have great air. So this is monitored by what's called the AQI, the Air Quality Index, which is a color code. So green, yellow, orange, red, maroon, and that color code is linked to number values. That these number values are calculated based on either the ozone or the PM two point five. 
So as I mentioned um, last lecture, that green and yellow are considered good air days. Um, and this is air quality conditions good for everyone. So green is good, yellow is good enough. So that means it's good, go outside, do whatever physical activities, enjoy the day, enjoy the air. Even orange is considered good enough. It's unhealthy for sensitive groups. Sensitive groups includes people with asthma, pre-existing conditions, immune, uh, immune issues. And so, but this is, for most of us, where we could go out on an orange day. So this is considered anything below 150 um, are days that you, you're fine breathing the outdoor air. Um, days that class is canceled or soccer is canceled or um, you're just told to stay inside, we're in this range. So this is red, orange, uh, red, purple, maroon. This is unhealthy for all. Okay, and um, these are usually going to be determined uh, by, you know, this ha ends up ha happening when we have PM 2.5 higher. But very sometimes it's because ozone is higher. Um, we haven't had that in the U.S. because we have these levels that are monitored. And uh, there were, you know, catalytic converters in, in cars. And so it's been less of a problem. So the ozone production we know is coming from sun, okay? And the thing about ozone is it requires sun and ozone is produced every single day in the presence of sunlight and then goes away when the sun goes away. So you can see on these, uh, these pictures of California, um, at 5 a.m. you have all green and yellow. So this is all good air, okay? Um, and then at 10 a.m. it's still good, all green and yellow. Okay, um, but then the sun has come out, but then the sun has reached its maximum at 12, and you have the sunlight that has, for instance, SO2 plus um, the UV from sunlight is creating ozone. Okay, in LA we have NO2 plus the UV energy from sunlight is also creating ozone, and that's in this region that's in the middle part of the state, you start having some ozone produced. Um, when you get 3 o'clock, you can see there's more ozone, and then you, you have more sun. And then by 5 p.m., this is actually usually the maximum amount of ozone, around 5. Okay, um, why is that? Because after, the sun goes down. And when the sun goes down, the ozone also the ozone levels also decrease. Okay, so we can see this at 11:40 p.m. We're back to yellow and and just a little bit of orange. Okay, so this is because ozone either decomposes or diffuses away every single night. Okay, so you don't the ozone levels drop at night. They peak around mid afternoon. So the way to plan your outdoor activities is really to um, do something early in the morning, like before 10 a.m., or later at night, after after 6 or 7, um, uh, if you're concerned about ozone exposure. As I mentioned, that your body can re recover after ozone exposure. It's PM 2.5 that your body can't necessarily recover from because those particles end up going into your bloodstream. And depending on what those particles are, um, they can have some serious health effects.